Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the next episode of A Designer Plays The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings Enhanced Edition. Uh, I think um, we should just go ahead and load up the game and get started. Uh, let's see, I, I guess... I guess it's this one at 11.01 a.m. last week. So, hang on. That's a really quick start. Woo! I want to make sure I can still see chat over on the side here. Yeah, there we go. Great, we're set. Oh, wow, that's that's amazing. I'm in a T pose after tabbing out. So I guess I'm gonna follow these guys. Get my leg for a heavy crossbow right now. It's a dragon. I can't believe it. There it goes. Stop admiring it and do something. There's lots of fire around here. That looks scary. I'm getting burnt. I don't know why or how. Oh, he's sitting up there burning that thing, so there you go. Hmm. So, uh, I have to confess, I find this particular segment to be um, quite confusing. I've played it a number of times, and I'm still not entirely sure how to get past it smoothly. Um, but before I really launch into that, I want to give myself a caveat for when I'm talking critically about these games, uh, and this one especially. Um, I already think The Witcher 2 is a really high quality, really well done game. Uh, they do a lot of stuff right. It's obviously an incredibly immersive and atmospheric experience. Uh, and also, as as someone in the games industry, as a game designer myself, um, reminding you that I don't, did not work on The Witcher 2, uh, as a game designer, I know that companies have limited resources. And, you know, when I talk about, for example, last time, the combat arena where uh, there was some stuff on the sides that caused me to get stuck while I was fighting over the, over the knights, the Lavalette knights, um, they may just not have had the time to go back and polish that one segment, you know, for example. So, I, I'll, I'll try to be measured in my criticism, but uh, bear in mind that even... Even if I made a suggestion that really would have improved it, it's not entirely likely at all that they would have had even the time to consider doing that. So, let's get started with this again. Yes, I would like to load from the last save. Dragon, take cover to the hoardings. All I'm right, protecting I'm protecting the, the king. So, it seems like this dragon is burning that thing up all over, and I'm getting burnt over here too. Ow! Mm. I'm, uh, I'm really excited this morning because um, I had a great time last night talking with Adam Koble about Dungeons & Dragons character creation. So if you missed the stream last night... Um, if you missed the stream last night, there's actually, um, it's actually up on YouTube. It's a dragon. I can't believe it. Marigold, stop admiring it and do something. Uh, and we went through and we created... Oh, interesting. We created a couple characters. You run. Oh, no. We created a couple characters last night for the new Dungeons & Dragons uh, game that came out on Thursday, I think. And um, it was just a lot of fun to sit down and chat with him for a while and to uh, to go through those rules. And today, I'm actually going this afternoon to a place in Montreal, a friendly local game store, 
where uh, someone is running a, a couple of starter adventures for um, from the starter set. I'm excited to see what that's all about. Thanks, Spoon Fairy. That's an excellent, uh, an excellent reminder for everybody. I've got cat hair on my little fuzzball here. Ooh. All right, again. I think I'm getting burnt up. Is it true you wish to mm -hmm. No! Ah, drat. I am playing this on hard, so... Um, to a certain extent, I do expect to have some trouble, but... Uh, I think my biggest complaint with this section is that there it's it's very early in the game, right? I'm only about an hour and a half in, uh, and I've been, you know, watching and, and really interacting with everything in that hour and a half. And um, there's nothing clear that leads me in the right direction. There's a bunch of stuff that tells me not to go this way, but it's kind of it's kind of inconclusive. So you could see how last time there was a lot of fire in here. That actually, um... It's a dragon! I can't believe it! Oh, that's... that was strange. I'm not sure even what... what that had... did. Uh, so there's a lot of fire all around here right now. And it's not at all clear whether or not that fire is burning me. And if I run out, I get burnt by the dragon. Whew! feeling we're going to be hearing this a bit. So let's see. It's a dragon. I can't believe it. Miracle, stop admiring it and do something. It's not that simple. The and my army descender. So he's over there. How do you find something like that? You don't. You run. Okay, now he's gone. So I'm going to now he's up there. All right, so that's not too crazy. If you if you actually do the work of watching where the dragon is, then you can have a much better chance of surviving. It's quite difficult to see, of course. Okay, and he's there now. Hey, I have a great idea, guys. Let's let the king take all the damage. Trying to avoid getting killed. No, now I now I get killed. All right. I think I've figured out the way to uh, accurately pass this segment. Alright, here's our dragon. You don't, don't you run. run. We've got to get to the town. Running has been effective. Oh, right, that's the mind control. I should really finish that. Yeah, that's what I like. You want me to go over and tell him? Dragon! Take cover! To the hoardings! He's 
that guy still alive? No, they took care of him. Alright. So it's not like they didn't think about how to how people could pass this segment. They clearly did. Um, it's just not quite it's not crystal clear, right? And for such an early segment, I, I might have preferred something a little more obvious. Cool. Ooh. I will take all the loot. Whoa. Cool. I can teleport myself, but not you. Run. Oh. Mm. The bridge is burning! Quickly, this way! That doesn't look good. Not good for your health to run across a burning bridge. I really like the monster design on that dragon. Oh no! Come back. So I guess that was the ballista. Plowing dragon nearly reversed the course of the battle. The fighting should have scared it off. Forget the dragon. I need to hear how this story ends. Mm. You were at my side almost all the time after the bridge collapsed. Almost. Tell me how you got into the monastery courtyard. The visual effects, everything during those those um, conversation setups looks so nice. Very well done. Very cinematic. Ha! And they said we couldn't get near the walls. Half a day and the town is taken. Report! Fighting for the castle continues, and a group of rebels have barricaded themselves inside the monastery. What of my children? Likely in the church as well, sire. Fen took a priest to task, finally mumbled something about a passage neath the walls. It would take a week to get a battering ram in here. Axes, sire. That will also take time. But what other course do we have? This priest. What of him? What of this passage? No, he fainted for it could really get going on him. He's under guard below. You've some work to do, Commander. Yes, sire. Silas, you look to this door. Fen, come with me. Witcher. Your Grace. I have a mission for you, one suited to your abilities. Vernon can be persuasive, but he's also hot-tempered, at times losing both his self-control and his subject. You must try to find this other passage on your own. Succeed, and you'll be the envy of all Vizima. So, two interesting things. One, um, Worldly Weka and TK Keymaster key masher are um, talking in chat about uh, Worldly Wicca says one thing I always wondered is why he can't voice prompts like uh, you know the dragon to the hoardings uh, keeps repeating when you restart multiple times two or three times they should mute them um, it's definitely an interesting proposal to mute that stuff after you've heard it two or three times I guess you'd have to track you'd have to have some variable that's counting the number of times you've played through a given segment but then it's like how do the designers decide that you've just played through the game four times and they don't want and and you still want to hear it all um, versus you know I guess they could track if you've heard it more than three times in the past three minutes um, that would that would be a way to, to solve that probably one of the reasons they didn't do that and one of the reasons many designers don't build something like that into their games is they don't expect players to like fail over and over rapidly at that segment. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and then the second thing was, did you guys notice how when the camera zoomed in on King Fulltest, all of his clothes went from like fuzzy to, you know, they, they popped crystal clear. That's just a uh, texture loading issue uh, as the camera moved from very far away up close to that cinematic um, conversation. Maybe Roach will get something out of this priest. It's a relatively large town. I could use a hint. I'm counting on him. But time is of the essence. Please explore the area. We seek a tunnel or something similar. Beware of traps. They may have planted some. 
You're best suited to this. My men lack your skills. Uh, I'm just pointing out the the texture um, resolution switch, not for any specific reason, just because it's interesting to see. Soldiers loyal to the Lavalettes would never harm the Baroness's children. I shall be reassured as to that when I see them, not before. We must act quickly. The rebels are dispersed, in disarray. As dim-witted as they are, I fear they could conclude the children would make good hostages. Oh, and another comment on like the hearing that that voice call over and over. Um, that that's another thing, especially where it is about it's. It, that call probably really is about a resource call. Do we want to spend the time to put in tracking of how many times a player has heard a call out in a certain period of time, or do we want to instead spend that time, you know, polishing the experience in that area to make it better, or polishing the experience in another area to make it better? Maybe in their playtesting, players just didn't really get too stuck at this segment, but they, they really had trouble on a boss fight, or one of their bosses wasn't really feeling as dramatic as they wanted it to be, so they put their effort there. All right, I'll go. I'm relying on you, Witcher. Where are those axes? Move your asses! All right, find a way inside the temple grounds. Welcome to the prologue of The Witcher 2. This section of the game will introduce you to the story and game world and help you familiarize yourself with basic gameplay mechanics. Hmm. It's interesting that that popped up just then. I think it did pop up early on. Where's my... Oh, no. It's not that. It's Z. Okay, there we go. You know what? While we're being picky, wouldn't it be nice if... Oops. Wouldn't it be nice if... Right up there in the upper left hand corner, on top of the medallion, there was actually a Z. Now, I was even saying you could, or I was even thinking to myself, you could have that Z like fade to gray after using it, and then it would, uh, it would, you know, come back to white once it was available again. But looking closely at the medallion in the upper left hand corner, there is something that indicates that w whether or not you can use it. Now, my medallion's eyes are glowing. There's a little pulsing yellow glow on there, which does indicate to me that I can use it again. Oof. There you go. That's that's quite well done. It doesn't remind me of what key to use. That's probably not necessary. You'll end up using it so much anyway that um, they don't need to remind you all the time of what key to use. Uh, but they did build in a way for you to understand when it was on cooldown and when it was available. Ooh, a hen. Can I talk to this hen? I just killed this hen. Huh. Well, I'm sorry, chicken. I hope you were not somebody's prized chicken. Take all. Orans. Rags and Orans. Oh, there you have it. Uh, we're getting to a pretty interesting part of the game, because there's lots of little things inside buildings that you just sort of never notice. Hey! Die! You stay dead. Terrifying, necromantic chicken. Uh, there's lots of interesting little things that get hidden back inside of closed buildings. Like you'll find somebody who's cowering away and you'll unlock a side quest. They've done some really neat stuff to help the world feel like a world. Ah, that's locked. It's also nice to have a game where there's lots of little, like, dressing houses like this. And actually, let's take a quick look at this. Are these the same house? They very well may be, actually. Hmm. I think these may be, may be two sides. Um, two different sides of the same house? No, not quite. 
not quite. They are close. Probably this bottom segment is the same. Nope, even the bottom segment is different. I was looking to see if they how much how much cost saving they had done in building this town. So this bottom segment is really just like a a block. It's really just a a rectangle cube. They've put a texture on it and then they've got these different kind of window shapes. Ah, uh, but they're, they're not just they're not just on the surface because you can see here the windows actually are cut back into the the surface of the cube. So that's uh, that's that's not nearly as cheaply done as they could have done that. But I think probably they used they used that same block and just adjusted it a little bit for the bottom of these houses. So what's going on down here? Shut it. We're innocent. The king will be around here, with you. Restricted military area. Hmm. So many men will die. All because of one bitch. No, I want to talk. Not attack. Hmm. Destroying obstacles. Press Q to cast your currently selected sign. Use the R sign to clear your path. Oh, there you go. I'm just taking a quick look through chat here again to see what you guys have been talking about. Good. All right. So there is actually a nice large area back here. Can I get in here? That's locked. Oh. Oops. That's not what I meant to do at all. That's okay, because that's still quite helpful to me. I do like that I can dodge so uh, effectively. I do feel really light on my feet and skilled, and I love that that sort of like spin attack with that overhead slash. It's really nice. There's a lot to be said for just making your character look like a badass. Ah, nothing in here. Uh, we were doing some motion capture for Eternal Crusade, and our lead game designer, Brent Ellison, was the guy who got to go to Toronto to the motion capture studio, along with David Gosling, the creative director. Uh, and he said that basically, you know, it was him and David sitting and watching someone who is like professionally in shape do ridiculously challenging moves over and over and over again, uh, with like sandbags on them for extra weight for a space marine, of course. Uh, and just watching this guy be so incredibly athletic uh, was just kind of awe-inspiring for the two of them. Who, you know, like <laughs> like many of us game designers, you know, we're not the most active breed of people. We spend most of our day sitting on our butts in front of a computer. I do know where to go. It did tell me to go down the well, but I am very interested in gathering all the herbs and also seeing like what's all down these back alleys and corridors and stuff. Oops, that's not what I meant to do either. Seems to be lots of fighting going on over here. Well, let's finish that off. Oh! Hmm? 
hang on, I'm, I'm getting attacked. It's important that I not die here. This is an optional segment. Damn. I like my, uh, that you can target swap so quickly as well, because that also makes you feel really cool. Ooh, yikes. Mm. Take that. Cool. Can I talk to this guy now? Or get in here? Soldier's orders. Not bad. I'll have to read those. Where are these whole sons coming from? I thought we'd cleared this district. Mm. Are they springing from their graves? Can I open this door? Yes. Not a whole lot in here. Worn, hardened leather boots. Let's read that, uh, that soldier's orders. Yeah. To unit commanders, all forces are to fall back immediately to defend the routes leading to the temple. These positions must be held at all costs. Death to the tyrant. Very well. Some more rins. Well, all right. Interesting that they had two paths. Ah, there we go. Scleroderm. And two paths to get down here. One that used your Ard sign to break through the door, and one that was just sort of a longer and more circuitous path. Probably that would have required me to fight those uh, those guys. So interesting to. Um, to see that they're offering me multiple offering me multiple routes to my objective swallow duration 10 I like that Multiple routes to my objective, but they are very different. So I can either be clever and stealthy or just be, you know, full force. Brute force. Good. Yeah. I think that's super cool. And then when you actually look closely at what you're seeing, you're seeing, like, not just the the outline of the character, but you can see like their their circulatory system down in there. That is so super cool. Whoever was in charge of the cat vision, um, that guy is a cool guy. That's for sure. I could jump down. Yep, let's do it. That guy's down there. And I want to kill him. Silver sword time. Very cool. Hey! What's up, buddy? Not able to get drowner brains off of them yet. Ah, there we go. Oh, interesting. That was just a corpse, something like that, in the water. Ah, yes, a soldier's corpse. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, hey. The Temerian Sword. I wonder what's up with that. How does that compare with the swords that I currently have? Temerian Sword, 11 to 14. Hey! Damage reduction on block, plus 5. So my current sword deals less damage outright, but it gives me a chance of bleeding. But you know what? I like the higher damage on that Temerian Sword. That, that seems quite nice. Some orins. Yes, yes. Manacles. Well. Let's get rid of you. Alpha Strike. Well done. Now down here in the lower right hand corner. There's that uh, update that basically a combat log. It's quite interesting. It shows me the experience that I gain, shows me the damage I'm taking, and it also shows me a little bit of like combat formulas. Oh, very nice. Drown our brain and essence of water. Let's look at these things. Alchemy. Essence of water. Contains hydrogenum. Drown our brain contains rebus. Very cool. Uh I actually like this this sort of system they have where they reduce alchemical components. They have a large amount of flavor, but then the actual number of components is small. So if it was... if they were literally just showing you exactly what you were using within your potions, it would just be, you know, Cubert, Rebus, Hydrogenum, etc. But... they use the flavor of what the identity of the item is in order to tell you more about the universe. Oh, that's very interesting. If you if you push up to a door, you don't actually push a, a button to to go through it. Uh, Geralt walks through it on his own without you needing to move forwards. Hmm. What did I just see? Oh, torches that I can light. Which I guess is very useful if I don't have cat on. That's locked. Very well. Up we go. Hopefully up to somewhere where I don't need cat because it's swiftly running out. Ooh. Yep, there we go. And now there's just like a ton of stuff around here that I could grab. Let's I'll go ahead and take a whole bunch. And I have no idea what any of it does. Well, I know it's for crafting. I know that later on I'll use it for crafting. So that's just a little overlook where I get to see the Skyatel, huh? Yeah. Not bad. There we go, now I can actually see in full color. That's good. Uh, you know, I... It's interesting to me that my cat potion ran out almost at the, the perfect time for me to be done with that segment. I wonder if they had internal metrics about how long segments in the dark should be in order to make it feel optimal to use a cat potion. Down with I did kind of remember that there were guys up over here from the times that I've played in the past. Nah, you don't want to hit him with light attacks. He's definitely a heavy attack kind of guy. 
There's something where my sword sort of flashes. You can actually see as I swing. It, um, it's got this red streak on it. I wonder if that means anything. I don't know. Any more sweet loot? I don't think so. There's two doors. That one's locked. Okay. Timber. Some stuff. More stuff. A stone medallion. Diamond dust cloth. I have uh, I have two feelings about all this, all these crates bearing loot. Um, one is that, like, does it feel more realistic because there is actually a bunch of is actually like stuff being stored in this castle, or does it feel less realistic because just wherever you go, there's tons of. Uh, Tons of stuff for you to pick up and take with you. Oh, that's locked. That's interesting. Climb. Yeah, there we go. Now that's well done. <coughs> Sorry. Because when you get down here, they put all this greenery and they made sure that you had a nice view of the sky. And it's very attractive to the eye. Players' eyes are, tend to be drawn towards light. Um, such that even subconsciously, players will move in the direction that the light is placed um, so just having that up there immediately sends a subconscious cue to players. It's Axie, isn't it? Kill the Witcher! Yeah. It sends a subconscious cue to players of which direction they're expected to go. Is there some kind of a kick or something? Something to break someone's block? Hmm. This just got more challenging than expected. He was not very effective against his ally. When I mind control you, I expect you to kill somebody. Well, let's just burn you to death. Cool. Now, I think there's a bunch of herbs I can gather out here. Maybe not. Well, there's some. It's nice that you don't have to use your, your medallion to gather herbs. You can just look at the environment and see them, but the medallion just makes it easier for you, for you to see what is useful to you. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't actually remember what's coming up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and brew a um, action cannot be performed here. Oh, a drat. I guess I'm not going to brew another swallow. It would have been nice. So it seems like if I alternate um, left clicks and right clicks, light attacks and fast attacks, it seems like I actually trigger combos that are different depending on the order in which I trigger them. So that's interesting. And it um, it reflects... Oh, man. Stand your ground. No, I know I'd rather not stand my ground here in this particular circumstance. Yeah, there we go. Yowza. Yeah, no problem. No. Yeah. There we go. Stab in the back, it says. Uh, 
Okay, so interesting that they, they wouldn't let me meditate out there, uh, especially with a big fight like that coming up. It feels like that's the perfect place to... Um, it's the perfect place to allow players to meditate and prepare for a big fight. Alchemy. Swallow. Ah, I'm missing what? Chelum. I don't even think I have any chelum anywhere, so... Yikes. Brown oil also needs chelum. Falca's blood, that's... Increases maximum sword damage, needs chelum. Chelum is clearly a very valuable resource. Petrie's filter, increased sign intensity. Rook, increases damage dealt with swords. Let's create one of those at least. Yeah. What is that? Wolfsbane, Vermilion. Cool. Well, that'll help a little bit. And let's drink it. Uh, this is actually, what I'm doing right now, is one of the things that I love the most about The Witcher, and The Witcher 2. Um, it rewards you for preparing, for researching, and knowing what can be effective. Got that swallow on. Oh, am I still using my silver sword? Yes, I am. That is interesting. That will help a lot. Uh, that's maybe worth noticing that I didn't even know I was using my silver sword because I, I kind of expect to just pull out my normal sword unless I actively change over to my silver sword. So, like when I just click to pull out my sword, I expect it to be my iron sword. Now, maybe that's just that I haven't been paying enough attention to what's been said to me in the tutorials or anything like that, but, uh, you know, there's a thing. White Myrtle. I wonder if that has Chellum in it. That would be very nice, wouldn't it? Wow. Yeah, why would I even mind control you if I can just kill you in two hits? Plow the lilies! Someone had said last time, and on uh, YouTube as well, plow the lilies. The lily is a symbol of King Foltest. And uh, plow the lilies is basically saying, fuck the king. Which is great! Let's grab a bunch of stuff. And I will see if there's somewhere I can go to brew another swallow, because I'm really not too keen on running out of it during this next big fight. I think I'm going to have to run around a bunch to regen some health. 
I think I tried this earlier, actually, and I remember that I could actually rest down over here. There you go! Alchemy. Swallow? No, I have no chalum. All right, well, let's just blitz through this. So I have I have 60 seconds left. What's that? Orans. I don't want Orans. I want Chellum. My kingdom for Chellum. Now I wish to open the door. Often when I'm in combat it takes a little while for the game to recognize that now I want to open a door. Alright, now what would be awesome is... Quinn. On this guy. Oh, that's not Quinn! Oh no! <laughs> that's not what I wanted at all. Is it Axie? I think it is. Yeah, let's do it. Yes. Oh, those vermin are getting crushed. You better believe. For the Baroness. Oh, but let's do that again. Uh, you seem like the kind of person I really don't want to fight if I can avoid it at all. Come this way. Wonderful. Oh! Ouch. Did I hurt myself with that? I'm glad these guys are just missing me all the time. That's awesome. Okay, now I've got to deal with that guy. I have no more Swallow, so that's going to be scary. Ooh! He hit me. I'm just going to dance. Take out your sword. You're going to want that. Am I getting hurt when I block? I think I am. That's a real shame. You know what would be better than to die for Tamaria? To live for Tamaria. You know what? I wish I had some traps. That's what would be nice. Can I pick up anything on you? Yes! The gate card the gate guard's key. Awesome. Orange glow over a chest means it imp contains important quest items. Balise, balise, balise. So, this is not where I can use that key. I remember there was a locked door way back, that where it, like, it didn't just say locked, it said needs a key. Maybe that's where I have to go. Let's check these places out. That's locked, so is this. Yes. So is that. So is that. So now I really do think I need to backtrack instead of going forwards. Find that same gate that was locked before, open it with the guard's key, and that'll probably let me open the gate for King Full Test. There we go. Hey, look at that. 
right on. Worn leather gauntlets. Now I'm wondering. I'm curious about these iron rings. Armor. Worn leather gauntlets. Armor plus one. No, my herbalist's gloves are far superior. I think that's DLC equipment. Herbalist's gloves. Now, don't I have somewhere in here should have the iron ring? I had some bombs. I have a bomb. I can put that there. Iron ring, it's just junk. Okay, there you go. Let's do it! Clicking rapid clicks. Alright. Well, this is actually a little clever when you look at it. Good morning, Jesper. This is actually a little clever. They have you go into another area and then load back into this area where that's already up. And uh, this is probably a separate space that they've duplicated the previous space and also opened that. Um, I would bet that that's why. You have just become the most titled witcher in the world. I bet that's why they had you change and scenes there. The wealthiest. I'll remind you of that when this is all over, sire. See, Vernon? Geralt succeeded. Lucky he did. The priest was downright discourteous and went off to meet his gods. I saw Scoia'tael on the river. Where? How many? What colors did they wear? Plow the elves. We'll tend to them later. The monastery awaits. It's cat cam time. Oh yeah. Scoia'tael. He's a fuzzy boy. beginning to come together, Geralt. You're either telling the truth or weaving a very convincing lie. I want to hear the rest. Voltes bastards. The solar. What happened? Worldly Weko is asking, uh, is there any game where you're not the lone protagonist solving everything and instead feel that you're a part of something bigger? Uh, you know, that's definitely what The Witcher is about. Uh, the Witcher is a kind of a, a game and storytelling experience that is commonly referred to as a power fantasy because it puts the player, or you know, many books fall into this category as well, movies also, puts the the player, the viewer, the reader into a perspective of being a, a character with much more agency than the player may have in his or her real life. You know, you can sort of, any problem can simply be solved with you and your sword. Um, Mount and Blade is a, the game that I would recommend to Worldly Weko because it's very much that um, you are just one person, you know, you might be a leader of armies, but, you know, you're just the leader. Your army is just as important as you are. And then there are many, many other people on your level roaming about the world and, and moving around in, in real time. And it creates a very different gameplay experience. The stories that, uh, that come out of that are emergent from the actions of the NPCs in the world as they pursue their own goals and as you pursue your own goals. Cool. We might have arrived at the same time if not for tales. Be specific, Witcher. Well, the Archpriest told the truth. His Majesty King Foltest of Temeria. Arthur Tales, erstwhile Count of Nesvelt. I signed your sentence. Yes, yet the Baroness saw fit to pardon me. An awkward situation, to be sure. Anais and Busi, where are they? The royal children. Don't test my patience, Tails, and I'll grant you a quick death. Confess, Foltest, before the gods and the people. Boosie and Anais are the fruit of your loins. Bow to the gods and admit the truth. You may not have noticed, Tails, but I just took this town. Aided by murderers, sorcerers, and a mutant for whom nothing is holy. This is hallow ground. You will not raise your hand against a servant of the gods. Oh yeah, let's use a sign. Right, taking the children. The solar. They're in the solar. What is this? Blasphemy! Sorcerer's tricks! But it said that uh it said that my sign failed. 
Good slap, Geralt. And the noble gets slapped. A win-win situation, if ever I've seen one. Damn, I've seen assaults go awry, but the dragon topples them all. Tops. That's what? Interesting religious iconography here. That's quite cool. There's some sort of devil. Some sort of skeleton that's growing into the ground. It's super freaky and I love it. The devil has scales inside of his chest. That's uh, awesome. How do you like Flotsam? How do you like Flotsam? Let's find Foltest's children in the solar. So why did he tell me that they were in the solar when my... Oh no. When my Axie sign the failed. Oh, yes. Goodbye, Vernon. I no, oh my god. Why would you do that? <laughs> oh, that was not necessarily... Oh, no. Okay. Ah. Uh. I'm not particularly convinced by this segment. I don't remember it from previously uh, because apparently I've I've erased it from my memory. So you feel like you're going to run forwards by pressing W, but instead running forwards is pressing S down away from the dragon. Uh, that's 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 something that kind of sets you up to fail. Stab him in the mouth. Yes. Oh, now I've lost my sword. You so. My life again. Ask what you will of me, Witcher. Within reason, of course. I need to leave, sire. I'd like Triss Marigold to come with me. If she wants. Are you blind? She's enamored with you. You may leave, and none shall stop you. You have my word. Hmm, why do I think that's not going to be successful? Um, so yeah. So, for example, picture this. Down that hallway over there is running away from the dragon. The dragon is behind me. The last scene before they give control back to the player is a shot down the bridge in that direction with the dragon behind the player and the camera looking towards the direction the player is wanting to run. And then they give control back to the player. But pressing W to move in the direction the camera was just showing now moves you towards the dragon. Oh, that's a real, a real bait and switch. Um, I don't think they did that on purpose to confuse people and make that segment harder. There's no reason to do that. But that's... that's That is uh, something that very many people are likely to get frustrated by on their first attempt. And then, you know, the second attempt, you know it and you can solve it and it's no problem. But um, it's an interesting exposure into how something as simple as a camera setup in a cutscene can affect the way the player expects to play immediately following the cutscene. Ooh, loot. Oh, I love the music in this game. That theme is so haunting. So you're going up there. Interesting that holding shift makes me walk instead of run. Still feels a little strange to me that that's the case because shift is run in so many games. I'm so used to just holding shift by default. Um, I like the change. It, do, it does take a little getting used to, though. Hey kids, glad you're having a good time while everybody out beyond the walls is dying.
Who goes there? Foltest. I've come for my children. Geralt, wait here. You might scare them. Ah, thanks be to the gods. My prayers are answered. Geralt celebrated too early. Go, Busi. That's not my father. But it is your king, boy. Bells, your triumph is complete. The city and fortress taken, sire. Time to thank the forefather and the mother creatrix for this great victory. Mm -hmm. A moment, blind man. I've not seen my children in six months. The gods can spare another minute. Listen to me. Your mother and I quarreled, but that is over. She was deceived. Evil men turned her against me. These men have been punished, and all will be well from now. Oh man, he is so snot-nosed. No tears, That's Busey. so great. One day you'll be king, and kings do not weep. Armed men approach, sire. Children, go to the refectory. My knights will soon be here. You must meet them, for one day you will rule them. Usi, go wash your face. They must not see that you wept. There's a bucket of water in the next room. Anais, help your brother. They really are foreshadowing this so well. Like, sire, let us pray. They had a really excellent like cinematics the director. They are. Hmm. They have your eyes, sire. Look at this. That's so well done. In engine cinematic. Here it comes. Oh my god. Look at that. Look at those liquids. Ah. Even the movement of her eyes. It's Hulk Witcher. Jump. That dude is so beefy.
<laughs> perfect timing, guards. Perfect timing. Suppose that's the extent of what you'll give me. Does this mean I'm free? Foltest, King of Temeria, has been murdered. Unfortunately for you, you're the only suspect. The murderer outsmarted you, so I'm to rot in this dungeon. Oh, no danger of you rotting. You'll hang. Convince them otherwise. I have no influence over the court. What if someone vouched for me? You have a witness. I was thinking of Triss. Was she not your lover? Who knows? But it's common knowledge she is. What happened to her? Ah, oh, she's fine. She's been invited to the next meeting of the Council of Regents. Um, it takes a lot of work to set up in-game cinematics like that. Uh, we had a, a cinematics team of, I think, three or so scripters putting together cinematics for The Secret World. Um, and, and just to do it so well, like, that's the kind of thing, I mean, it, it's a little bit maudlin, it's a little bit dramatic, we can talk about, you know, we can critique, uh, you know, the quality of the children's, uh, character models, for example, we can critique the use of slow motion, but I think anytime we're, we're starting to critique, um, sort of the presentation of the cinematic instead of like the technicality of how the cinematic is is put together and and bugs with the cinematic i think we've really moved beyond um i mean we've moved into talking basically about cinema um so to me that's that's just really incredibly well done they clearly they just have a an ace team working on that kind of stuff for the witcher 2 uh, and i really hope they keep the same same group of people for the witcher 3 what's the situation in tamaria the Council of Regents has convened to restore order. That means three things. Utter chaos will prevail, Visima will run dry of wine and strong drink, and the local whores will make a killing. Is Triss participating in the meetings? Indeed. Only to find out that she's no longer needed. How do you know? It's my business to know. They want to run a kingdom without a sorceress? They already have a kingdom without a king. They'll use every opportunity to get rid of her. Who will rule? The chief contenders are Count Maravel and Baron Kimbolt, who already tussle for control of Lavalette Castle. What about Foltest's bastards? The king's blood runs in their veins, so yes, they are entitled to the throne, not some drooling nobles. Foltest told me a lot about you. If not for him, I'd be a drunk or a vagrant. Foltest did more for me than my father ever did. But then my father did exactly nothing, for I never even met him. In any case, I'll not rest until the murderer is punished. Tell me how you serve, Vernon. I carry out orders others are incapable of executing. For fuck's sake, you command the Blue Stripes. Do something. The real murderer is free, and he's further and further away with every hour you spend prancing around in here. I find the killer monk story unconvincing. I don't claim he was a monk. He was wearing a frock, though. He sailed off in a boat with some Scoia'tael. Would you recognize him? No problem. A mountain of meat. Never seen anyone bigger. What would you do if you escaped? I'd go after the Kingslayer. You know where to look for him? Some Scoia'tael helped him escape. That's where I'd start. I expect you might know this particular group of elves. How'd you work that out? They wore blue striped masks. Trophies, I expect. Your vets, Commando. I know where to find them. We've a trail to follow after all. If you want to start over and take it easy this time, get me some food.
Now that you mention it. This! Bring us food and drink. <laughs> Shame you didn't think of that earlier. It's your own fault, Geralt. Your fate is in your hands. Thank you. Never heard of women serving in the special forces. This is one of my best people. How'd she wind up in the blue stripes? I pulled her from the paws of the Scoyatel. Just 16 when they torched her village and slaughtered everyone. The unit commander took a liking and spared her. One last thing. This file is about one Geralt of Rivia. <coughs> and Foltest's death? Actually, Geralt's death. The report details events from five years ago. Rivia. Population 1,234. In that, 253 non-humans. September the 25th, 1268. A riot erupts. A massacre ensues. Streets run with the blood of elves and dwarves. One person finds the courage to face the raging crowd. During the rioting, 76 non-humans perish, including the witcher Geralt of Rivia. Stabbed in the chest with a pitchfork by a man of whom we know only that his name was Rob, and he owed three crowns at the local tavern. Yennefer of Vengerberg dies trying to heal the witcher. The bodies of Geralt and the sorceress are taken away by a mysterious young girl with ashen hair. Their place of internment remains unknown. Mm. I remember. Rivia. Yennefer. What just happened? I saw... I saw my own death. And the rest? Have you regained all your memory? That's all. I just remember the end. Vess! Interrogation's done. Restrain the prisoner. I'll take the key. I sail up river at dawn. Guards will collect you in five minutes. Eat. You'll need your strength. Geralt is pretty ripped. Not yesterday. He was a hero, pretty much. Everyone's man. Personally saw him cut down 20 men in the blink of an eye, so it's no surprise. Hmm. See him dashing along those walls? Can't rightly say I ever saw his sword the blade move so fast. I thought that beast would tear him to bits when it came out of the clouds. Delayed don't mean denied. Hangman will do that tomorrow. <laughs> what say we, uh, All right. I'll not touch this gum. I get scurvy. I think that's where we're going to end it for today, guys, and uh, do some Q and A.
So I'm just going to go out to the main menu so we have that lovely, lovely music going on in the background. Uh, so, yeah, like, good stuff. I think I'm, I'm very, very nearly out of the prologue and ready to enter the uh, first act of the game. Um... Someone was asking what I think of the combat so far. Uh, it feels like dodging is very strong. Uh, it's strange when I use the... Is it the Axie sign? The mind control sign? And... And the guards who come to attack me don't actually damage me when they swing. Uh, someone's talking about the voice acting. Um, I actually really like Geralt's voice acting. I think he's got a voice that sounds, you know, very recognizable and kind of iconic. Um, I, I, I can see how people are a little tired of the sort of very gruff monotone. Even Worldly Weko is saying here in chat, he's tired of the stereotypical gruff monotone of the male protagonists and everyone around him having emotions and character through their speech. Uh, and actually, I think, you know, Geralt is kind of that stoic, gruff type, sure, uh, but when when he's talking to Vernon Roach at the very end and he says, for fuck's sakes, Vernon, um, I think he actually goes outside of that gruff monotone style of voice and, and, and shows a little bit of more exasperation, which is very nice. And it's well done on the part of the voice actor who plays Geralt. Who, who is that? Let's see. Geralt of Rivia, voice actor, English. Doug Cockle. What else has he done? He is an actor known for Captain America, the first Avenger, where he plays a young doctor. Hmm. And of course, he's been the voice of Geralt of Rivia for all of the Witcher games in English. Wonderful. Ah, uh, what am I looking forward to with Stars Without Number? Uh, I actually know only very little about it. I've been reading through the rulebook. Um, I just got through character creation. It seems quite interesting. Um, I'm most looking forward to the sandbox aspect of it and the option to go anywhere and do anything within this sector of the star system. That's very interesting. What do I think of the world building in The Witcher? Strengths and weaknesses? Asks Worldly Wacko. World building in The Witcher. Um... So I come from having played The Witcher 1 about, um, you know, a year and a half ago or something like that. But uh, I'm familiar with the world as a result of playing all of that. So I have all of these expectations about politics uh, and, you know, the scoyatel and infighting sort of pre-built into my perception of The Witcher 2. If I just look at The Witcher 2, really the only thing that hints at that is the presence of the Scoia'tael, who they're not explained yet in the game, so I don't necessarily have a, a frame of reference to understand what Scoia'tael are and what that means. And then secondarily, the sort of um, cartoon-drawn segment about uh, Geralt of Rivia's death, where there was a riot and a number of non-humans were murdered in town. That's not the sort of thing that you commonly find in um, in fantasy games and settings prior to this. So it, that's an interesting development, and it sets up a different expectation for The Witcher. Ah... Uh, Intonablev asks, What do you think of all those small rooms in the town? I always thought they were kind of awkward to navigate. Hmm, interesting. Um, I like the small rooms from a perspective of uh, I like the fact that they're there. And 
Uh, I think they, they do a lot to establish the world, and the fact that you can just go into and explore them is very neat, because it's often, or it's common, that you can't go into those kind of things. There's just doors that are locked, and you can never enter them. Um, but with this one, you can, and there's stuff in there. Uh, the stuff doesn't necessarily seem to imply a strong identity to the location. It's just kind of, you know, a couple orins and a, a rag or something like that. But it's nice that you can go in there. The awkwardness to navigate, uh, I think that's actually a, a reasonable uh, point to make in Tanablev. Um, I think they are a little awkward to navigate, primarily because of the camera. Uh, I wish I was back there right now so I could look at the way the camera moves through spaces that are tight. Uh, I'll have to do that next time I play, next Saturday morning, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, because when I was playing Dark Souls, the camera seemed to so smoothly move in and out and accommodate the space that I had available that I never really felt like the camera got in the way, even though it was a third-person game. Whereas, you're right, in that in those small rooms for, uh, for the, the houses in town, the camera was a little bit awkward for those, those segments. Flamon is asking, have I played The Witcher 1? Yes, and if I have, can I? Can you compare your opinion on combat and story between 1 and 2? So, story, I think, is comparable between 1 and 2 so far. I think both of them do an excellent job, and I, in fact, I, I made myself go back and finish 1 uh, because I really liked the story and I wanted to see where it went. Combat in 1 was much more about, sort of like, it was a combo-based system, without a lot of um, without a lot of flexibility to really trigger the combos. Uh, what happened was they had an icon in the middle of the screen that would flash and you had to tap the mouse button in time with the flashes. Uh, and it kind of ended up feeling a little bit like a Simon Says-esque combat system to me. Uh, and and all of the combat actions were very sort of rote. You'd, you'd do them over and over again uh, without any variation. So I wasn't super thrilled with the combat in 1. The combat in 2 feels a little bit more dynamic. It feels like if I do two quick attacks and then a fast attack, I tend to do that big uppercut. And if I do two big attacks and then a fast attack, I tend to do that spinning sort of like triple slash. Uh, so. I haven't figured out exactly the way the combos work yet, but already I feel like there's more like there are more moves at my at my call for me to bring up whenever I want based on the situation. Alaquane asks, with the increase in popularity of SSDs, solid state drives, will designers stop doing loading screens and loading screen tips? I don't think we'll ever get away from loading screens, Alaquane. I think um, if if solid state drives become so popular that we no longer need loading screens, what we'll do is we'll create games that are complex enough that the loading uh, is significant even on a solid state drive. And I think like if you go and you play Dwarf Fortress and you generate a new world, that's going to take you like 10 minutes on a top of the line computer just because it generates 250 years of history and all of the characters that are living in that world up to that point in history. Um, so with faster read-write times, I think we really will see an increase in the complexity of games such that the increase in read-write times doesn't solve it. Loading screen tips is an interesting topic. Um, was it... it was, uh, Dark Souls, actually, I was, I was playing, and, um, the loading screens were so fast on my modern machine that I could never read any of the lore that was displayed on the screen for the uh, for the item that was being shown on the loading screen. I actually would have very much appreciated what some games have started doing nowadays, which is a uh, you know press any key to continue once the loading screen is done. Uh, maybe that would get irritating if you had to do it for every loading screen, but um, for loading screens that display tips or display information like that, I think it could be cool to give players with powerful machines the option to see that stuff. Pyrofox asks, if this game is meant to be a mature Game of Thrones-esque story, how's it doing? I, I think it's doing a fine job at the moment. It's, you know, um, it's, it's brought up 
political intrigue, um, you know, a, a reasonable sort of arrest of the main character for him being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, it's clear that the prologue was very heavily motivated by politics rather than, you know, anything more dramatic. Um, Full Test is clearly not a perfect king. Um, and his enemies are clearly not perfect enemies, but they're also clearly not, um, they're clearly not, like, evil. Like the, the Baroness, um, she was just trying to protect the children, right? Get them away from the king, who she sees as, you know, uh, an incestual, you know, asshole. Uh, SS Larable asks, Have I heard about the Total Combat Rebalance mod for The Witcher 2 made by The Witcher 3 gameplay designer? I haven't. Um, it sounds very interesting, but I'm not going to I'm not going to put it on for this broadcast because as a part of the A Designer Plays series, I really want to look at the game as it was originally designed rather than rather than as it was fixed but not officially. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely have to check it out, Slayerable, but um, I want to keep the playthrough pure, so to speak. Without having played it, Pyrofox again, are, am I happy that The Witcher 3 is going open world? I'm very interested to see how The Witcher 3 succeeds at going open world. Elfminster says, I can't really get into The Witcher 1 because of how the combat works. Uh, my solution for that, Elfminster, was just to start up a new game on Super Easy and just blow my way through all of the combat because the story was much more interesting to me than the combat so you know I just made it so the combat wasn't very important would I recommend people playing Witcher 1 if they have only played The Witcher 2? Uh, now we live in a really interesting that's that's a question from chat uh, member Shazam uh, that's a really interesting question generally I mean like five years ago I would have said yeah absolutely definitely go back and play The Witcher 1 of course you know we're ignoring some problems with the time frame there. But five years ago, I would have said, yeah, go play The Witcher 1. Play it on easy. Just play through just to see the story. Now, I might actually suggest you try to find a Let's Play and just sit down and, and take a look um, if you want to dedicate some time to finding out the story. Um, or even just reading a, watching a story summary on YouTube. Um, and with the rise of YouTube, with the rise of Twitch, and the, the rise of the Let's Play, there's a lot of stuff that's available for people to to find out about games without playing them. And let's see if there's another good question down here. Looks like people are starting to talk about other games. Uh, is there anything on the last YouTube video? Oh, here's an interesting question that I'll I'll happily answer from LZ on YouTube. He asks, Hey LZ, good of you to stop by and ask this question for me. He asked, uh, as an aspiring game dev myself, I'm wondering how you got into it. What did you study? I'm also a huge Witcher fan. Um, what did I study? I studied music. I went to school for a Bachelor of Music with a focus in vocal performance. And over summers... In order to earn my spending money, I, I worked for Red Storm as a quality assurance tester on uh, Ghost Recon and Rainbow Six titles. So um, over the summers doing that, I gained enough skill at quality assurance and experience at quality assurance that when I graduated and I decided I didn't want to go become a musician professionally because it wasn't, um, it wasn't stable enough, I decided to apply for some of the local games companies in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is where I lived. I went to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And um, uh, Funcom had an opening for QA testers for Age of Conan, and they snapped me up pretty quickly after they saw that I had a lot of prior experience working with Red Storm. And I stayed with them for three years in Raleigh, and then I moved up to uh, Montreal when they decided to open the Montreal studio. And um, along with that move, I put in an application to become a designer. Now, while I was in college, I also took, uh, I think, two semesters of coding courses. So I had, a, uh, you know, a decent amount of experience with coding and, you know, not necessarily 
hard or deep coding, but, but at least with logic and the way computers work. And I was able to, to rely on that past knowledge of coding and also some prior experience with game development software like, uh, I mean, like really old stuff like Click and Play or the Neverwinter Nights um, toolkit. Uh, I was able to use my experience with those and my knowledge of coding to um, to become a a level designer on the dungeon team for the Secret World, and that's how I I started as a designer, and it's it's all been uphill from there. So it's been fantastic. Suspicious Pineapple has a great comment. Music wasn't stable enough for me, and so I became a game designer. Well done, Stephen Capaface. Yep. It's true. All right, guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out today on my A Designer Plays The Witcher 2. Uh, I'll be uploading this to YouTube, so if you didn't catch all of it, you can definitely check out the rest of it on my YouTube channel, which is at, at youtube.com slash silentosiris. Same address as is up in the bar above. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash silentosiris. Exact same as everything above. Uh, the O in Silent Osiris is a zero, of course. Uh, we'll do this again next Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and uh, I hope you guys have a great week until then. If you follow me on Twitter, it's likely I'll probably do um, some random streams here and there. I know that Monday night uh, I'm playing Stars Without Number with Adam Koble running the game, uh, JP, uh, Jeff Robinson, and um, DJ Wheat. That's going to be over on twitch.tv slash nmejp. And on Tuesday, I am running the next episode of Numenera for uh, JP over on his channel at twitch.tv slash nmejp. So be sure to check those out, and thanks everybody for stopping by.